everybody. So we're going to do a little bit of working on the front with a long hair dachshund. This is the apple cider vinegar and citric acid spray in distilled water. And just a little tiny mist of that. And we're going to come in with our bore brush. And this is just to rough in before we do our beer and egg bath. And we've been working on this dog for about how many months now? Since March. And getting this coat to, to come in really nice. And before it was pretty dry, didn't have this color here. But I want you to notice that with the work that we've been doing in roughing this dog in, is you can start to see the, the contour uh, of all the, the lines on this dog. We've got the shoulder here, the upper arm, coming down here to the leg and the foot. And he's watching another little dachshund that's walking around down there. Okay, if you can go ahead and hold up his head a little bit. Okay, so this isn't right where we want it yet. Uh, if we take the center line of this dog, that should be the furthest point sticking out. And right now there's a hole right here because we need to let this hair grow so it fills that in. And then that way, that will be the furthest point sticking out in the front of this dog right there. And there's a lot of people that use this kind of crazy thing where you tell them wherever the protosternum is, you put two or three fingers there and cut. Don't listen to that. Because if you do, what's going to happen is you're going to end up with a prosternum or it appears the prosternum is too low. And that's down here. And if this was really the prosternum, you would see that this would be too short of an upper arm. So basically what we've done so far to start roughing this in, is we just simply take and brush the hair 90 degrees, and you'll see some hair stick up. And when it sticks up, we just pull right at the tips right there. When we come in here, same thing. That exposes these hairs here. And then we're going to take just the tips and start working this hair out. We're doing two things. We're going to shape this so the judges can see, can see all these beautiful lines on this dog. But the other thing, too, is we're creating rows of coat underneath this. And that increases your density right there. When we increase our density, every time we pull hair, then in about four weeks, new hair pops through. And we create layer after layer after layer. And that makes this really nice and thick right here. And it also will hold this down, uh, unlike where you see some of those dogs in the ring where there's just basically a big poof ball right here. Now, here you're able to see where this arm is, and then coming into where the shoulder goes like that. And the way that we created those lines, we're not really created those lines, but the way we were able to show those lines is we go 90 degrees like that. I like to use my roughing in with a 13 millimeter metal stone and I'm just going to take just the tips of this and pull just a few hairs. The reason why I like to use that 13 millimeter is because the 13 millimeter does most of the work. The weight of this tool will help the momentum in pulling these hairs right here. And then as I start to get into like the nitty gritty stuff, I'm going to come in here, 90 degrees, expose some of these hairs. And now I'm going to use the 8 millimeter stone, which is basically just going to grab just some tips. And just a little bit at a time. And that's going to help shape in towards the center line of this dog right here. And that's where you get this key. Just like that. Here, I'm going to take these and I'm going to pull these hairs from the back side bringing them towards me like this, and that shows you all the bubble of hair here. And again, I'm going to take just the tips of these hairs, right here, just a few at a time, and I'm gonna work this density down so it's not a big puff ball. Now that's the eight millimeter stone and the 13 millimeter stone. If you have quite some time before your show's coming in, Another thing you can do for roughing in is you're going to take your bore nylon brush, you're going to pull this over to the other side, and you're going to just go right over the tips of these hairs here.
to help create that shape. And you're going to need to probably do this in the beginning because you don't have the density to pull that off. But once you start to get that density in, because you're using these stones, then you're going to want to maintain it with the stones and not so much with the thinning chair right there. Let me tell you a little bit about when you're working with these dogs, don't use pet grooming tools. There's a huge difference between pet grooming tools and show grooming tools. These are extremely precision. You can see the cut that I made right there without actually seeing the cut. You can see that I actually did cut this hair, but it's not going to leave marks. Pet grooming tools are designed to groom dogs quickly so you can get them in and out, and that way you make more money that way. But with a show grooming tool, that's designed for longevity. And we want to get these dogs to look like the hair actually grows that way. So it looks more natural. And so you have to use more precision tools when you're doing that. So that's basically how we're shaping this front, shaping this keel. Coming in here, rough this in here to get this down. That way we can get this closer to this body without being a big clump of hair right there. Okay, so that's the rough in portion here. We can also, a lot of times the setter breeds will do this too, is where they'll come in here 90 degrees like this. And we can also take our 13 millimeter, eight millimeter here and start to work this down. Get rid of those little fuzzies here, both on the top line and on the side of the body. And then when we brush that down, Hi, very handsome. Yes. So I'm going to take all this hair to the right, like this. And by taking this hair to the right, it's going to show me what hairs need to come off to make this pro sternum exactly where it needs to be. And I'm going to take my thinning shears and I want to make a straight line. So we're going to come up. And then I comb this like so. And you see now where this is starting to have shape to it compared to that side right there. Now, people don't know what to do with this down here. We're going to take this here and we're going to trim in with this leg. And look at how it changed that front right there. And you look at that side. Okay, so now I'm going to do a little bit of fine tuning. I'm going to take this hair 90 degrees like this, and I'm going to take off just the tips. Pack 90 degrees this way. Bring that straight down. Okay, so now I'm going to take the metal stone and these hairs that are sticking up here, I'm just grabbing the tips.
Okay, let's get him to stand up. So just kind of running on the edge of this leg right here. And you can see how this is starting to form right onto the side of this leg. And once we start getting rid of all these problem hairs here, this is going to just lay really, real, really good color, good texture, and that's going to form fit right along the side of that leg right there. But we got to start slowly working all this stuff out of here. And you don't want to try to do it in one shot because if you do, then it's going to all grow back at the same time. So we're going to do a little bit at a time, and then that's going to come in with some new hair. And when that new hair comes in, it's actually going to hold these furnishings back. Look how gorgeous that's looking. Oh, that's going to be really nice. But again, that's going to take some time. And bring it out to the side. And I'm going to come straight down. Just to take a little bit of that density out there and then I'm just barely going to pick with the tip of this comb to bring this forward to expose those hairs there I'm going to take those out Work your way from these tips into the hair. Now I'm using the eight millimeter metal stone. That's gonna be a little more detailed.
and increase this density here so it's going to really show off the upper arm and then the shoulder lay back here and we've still got a little bit right in this section here so 90 degrees get rid of these longer hairs out of the way pull just the tips of these and that's going to make a nice beautiful transition into this beautiful front you know, gorgeous that looks that's beautiful okay so now we got to blend this upper arm so I'm going to go 90 degrees like this And I'm going to work some of these longer hairs here. So you can see this stuff here is problem areas. So I will take just the tips of these and start to work these out of here. Anytime you go 90 degrees, it exposes the hairs that are problem hairs. If you just try to eyeball this, you're going to make a lot of holes in your dog, and you don't want to do that. And this hair here is blocking this beautiful outline. And you see this line here. You want to see all those lines, and it should all be nice and smooth. And then we can come in with the three-way tool and try to start working some of this bulk out of here. Now, if you don't have the density to pull this off, you can come in with your thinning shears and right where this line is, you can kind of whittle this down. You don't want to use cheap thinning shears when you do this. You want something that's going to come in and blend this where it looks nice and natural. These are what I call show grooming thinning shears. And the difference is it's going to take a little bit longer to whittle this down, but it's not going to create holes. It's going to make it look more natural. When you use pet grooming tools, those are designed for speed. So they get the dogs in and out quicker. The only time I'll do this is if I just don't have the density yet and I'll kind of whittle this down but eventually I'm going to want to just pull all of this and get my density in there. You can also use this to take off a little bit of this if you don't have your density there. You can see this blend really nice. Here's another area here where you got you don't have the dens density to pull this off, so we'll just kind of rough this in with the thinning shears here. Now, a lot of times you'll see manufacturers talk about you know this many teeth and that many teeth, and that's really it doesn't really matter on those teeth there. The main thing that matters is that how it cuts. And in a lot of cases, you know, you can see some that are like 4420s and you'll see others that are 4420s and they just have a totally different cut to them. So, you know, the, the way that the thinning shear cuts is more important than those number of teeth on there. I know with the, the basis is that you know, with certain numbers of teeth, then it's supposed to give a certain style of cut, but it's also the way that those teeth are shaped. And you also need to have quality thinning shears so you can get really super fine stuff too. Look at how fine tuned mm -hmm. it's looking.
Okay. Bring this down. Come in with my three-way cone. Bring this stuff out here so I can find out what needs to come out. And then pull these longer pieces right on the edge. When you first do this, it may not look that great because you're roughing this in and you're losing your density there. But after a while, if this is a dog that you want to special for quite some time, this coat's going to look amazing. When this hair comes in, it's going to come in so beautiful, nice and dark, good texture. Just like you see this stuff being replaced right here. I'm going to take this foot up and forward like this. And I'm just going to tidy all these hairs. I don't want anything dropping below a pad. I mean, yeah. So get that nice and cleaned up. You should be able to see every one of these pads and there should be no hair dropping below. But don't scoop out the hair in between the pads because that actually protects the dog's feet. You look at some of the dogs like sled dogs and stuff like that, they actually look like they have slippers on because the hair is so long here that's protecting. All right. So by doing that, that gives you your perfect length behind here. Eventually, like with this stuff here, I would want to train the dog to lay down on its side. And then I would slowly start working some of these hairs here. And that gets that to lay down here. And that's going to get rid of all this yucky light stuff with no texture and replace it with this really nice deep stuff here with good texture. Okay, Winston, are you ready to go take a break? Yes, please. You see, we get lots of break. So this is something I would not do before a show, what you see me doing now where I'm kind of tidying this up. This is what I would do to rough in. And you really want to make sure you're doing this with those stripping stones. But I'm just kind of getting some shape here. And then I'll maintain that later on. So we've been grooming on this dog for about four days now. And you can see how amazing this coat looks. It's got shine, depth of color, how it's laid.